Do you have a class that's so hard there's no hope for an A? Maybe you're just not cut out for the subject and will have to accept the L's. Well, I have a confession to make. I suck at physics. Like there's no other subject where concepts just go whoop over my head, in one ear and out the other because it's just so hard for me to understand intuitively. But guess what? I've gotten A's in every subject for the past eight years, including in physics. How? Today we'll go over what I did and the three tips for you to ace any challenging subject. The last tip is something Mr. Beast can teach you. Huh? Yes, you'll have to see. Let's go. Okay, so some background to my physics journey. The first time I touched physics formally was in AP Physics my junior year. I remember one night I was working on this problem about a boat going down a stream and there was some opposing current. Everything I thought about the problem, every direction I guessed the solution was, was was wrong. This was very disappointing to me and I imagine to my two electrical engineering parents. Let's see the process I used to still get that A. First, we need the right way to think about challenging concepts. It's frustrating to read and watch problems over and over again and still not get it. We expect that with enough effort, suddenly a light switch will just flick on and we'll understand everything immediately. It will all become clear to us. But that's not the way to think about improving in challenging concepts. Improvement is not 0 to 100. It's not a light switch. Instead, it's a maze. You navigate through this maze, hit dead ends, have to trace back, and you have to go through obstacles. Since each tough concept is a maze, we have to treat it like one and do my first tip, which is start from scratch. It's easier to approach a maze if before you enter, you have already done easier mazes before or you have transferable skills from past experiences. At the very least, you need to know what the maze is. For example, when doing math or science, you need those problem solving skills from fundamentals like I talked about in my math advice video. Since I knew physics was my weakness, the summer before I started at Caltech, where we would have to learn every single STEM subject, I watched every single one of Caltech YouTube's channel physics videos. And that started from the very beginning. The very first video talked about Newton with the apple, boom, dropping on his head. I already thought I knew the basics of things like gravity, but I still started from the very beginning and I worked my way through all this many videos. I didn't remember everything from all of that content, but going through that experience indirectly helped me. At least my mind was warmed up. But Amy, if we're already learning math and science in school, how do we start from scratch? How do we build new problem solving skills? Ah, good question. The answer is that we must start from learning something new. I recommend that every, every, every single person learns coding in their lifetime as early as possible. That's something that I really missed out on in high school because for some reason I thought that when people code, they're like those little computer geeks, but that's computer. Whoa, that's funny. That's completely not the case. <laughs> Knowing how to program is an amazing skill no matter what you do in the future because it makes your mind so much more open to using logic and problem solving in every other aspect that you'll have to do in school, in your job, and so on. And specifically, many students find math and science to be the hardest classes. Coding helps with all math and science subjects because of that problem solving. Mark and Matt, data scientist and software engineer, created DigiCafe because they saw a need. Students needed an easier, more accessible way to learn programming from scratch. As I said in my top 1% video, I actually took the programming class myself and I found that the content was really focused and helps you even when you have never done coding before. Plus it really emphasizes that problem solving by guiding you through how to solve problems without telling you everything. So it truly sharpens your brain with the way that the course is designed. There are so many options on there right now like Python for data science, R for data science, and Python for software development. DigiCafe focuses on coding and learning, while other websites only do one or the other. So you're getting a two for one deal, boom, right in one place. Damn good deal. Plus, if you're really into coding and getting that bag in the future, then DigiCafe also helps prepare you for lead code with its projects. Programming is definitely a transferable skill for the future. After I learned coding at Caltech, I was able to do better problem solving in general, and I actually used coding at my consulting job, which was so surprising, but it really gave me a leg up compared to the other people on my team who couldn't solve the problems like I did. Learning from somewhere like DigiCafe is that first step, that dipping of your toes into the world of programming. And who knows, you might find 
find it so amazing and fascinating and you can use it for other aspects. Even if you start from the data science route, that exposure is really valuable and highly transferable to software. In a maze, you hit dead ends and you have to do, 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 retrace your steps and try going again to get farther and farther the last time. If you had a guide to help you through the maze, wouldn't it be easier? Of course. That's why you need live help. So going back to when I struggled in AP physics, often I would hit dead ends where I just couldn't get farther in a problem or I couldn't get farther in my understanding of a physics concept. So I would enlist the help of my mom. Working on my own to try and work through the challenges was good to some extent, but at one point it just becomes a waste of time and energy because I didn't have that intuition. So instead of continuing to jam myself into dead ends, working through problems with someone gets me to understand way better, way faster than struggling on my own. With my mom, like on that boat in the river problem, I would get to a step, ask a question, confirm if my thinking is on the right track. Then I continue going down that track, ask a question again, she answers, and then there's back and forth which is a really helpful process. She guided me so in those study sessions, I didn't even get to dead ends and I can jump through obstacles more easily. Reading something everyone else reads only gets you so far. You need live customized responses to your personal struggles. In fact, data, yes, I did some research for this video. Data tells us that students who get tutoring actually score on average two whole standard deviations higher than students who were only taught in traditional classrooms. And speaking of helpful live classes and feedback, DigiCafe also offers this on their courses as well. Mark and Matt will go through the content of three courses in five weeks. The content that Mark and Matt will cover in these DigiCafe classes is gonna be the same as the online courses, but you would get an advantage because you can ask questions to experienced experts live. And this is all in addition to the Discord that's there as a valuable resource. Essentially, the DigiCafe courses to improve your problem solving skills is like a boot camp, but it's even better because you can actually do all three courses at the same time at no additional cost. There's no one specific path. You can go to as many classes and sessions and paths that you want. So you can learn data science in R and Python and software development. Oh, and the important thing is it's only $35 a month. That's an expensive meal in New York City. No, an expensive lunch in New York City. That's such a good deal compared to the other courses I saw. For example, there was this other data science course that charges around $300 per month and that was without live help. So definitely a steal. I encourage you guys to check out the link in my description later to get all the good information. The live classes will begin on this date. So mark your calendars and voila. Follow these instructions to sign up for the live classes. Like Mr. Beast with YouTube videos. Just make a hundred videos and improve something every time he started from the bottom now we're here and is now at 200 million subscribers and that's why we should improve by iteration iterate is a fancy word for to perform repeatedly even with starting from scratch and getting live help you still need to try and hit some dead ends yourself learn from that and then don't hit the dead end again so do do the thing try learn one to two lessons from your mistake or where you got stuck to learn you can either use videos reading live help then you improve on that one to two things so you can go one step further next time basically you want to improve one thing at a time imagine if you improve by just one percent every time you do a certain problem and you try that type of problem like five times that's a big improvement that compounds over time so we need to remember that math concept that power of compounding interest for each time you iterate you have a little level up and that's gonna be so significant over time that eventually it seems easy how much you improved you got to make a bunch of videos and improve over time to be great you don't just pick up a baseball and become an MLB level uh, athlete within a year you guys are amazing a subscriber actually commented that they use what's called a mistake journal where they document all their mistakes from the past this is such a good idea and crucial because if you don't really internalize and focus on your mistakes there's no way for you to improve i know it's really fun and feels good to focus on the stuff you're good at i love doing things i'm good at too but where you feel the most pain and bad about yourself and try to get better in those will be the areas of opportunity such that you will get better faster than ever. Often it's easier to go from 50 
280, then go from 80 to 85. Bigger jumps are made by simply fixing your mistakes by iteration. And that repetitive nature will really form those connections between neurons such that you can understand the challenging concepts better. Of course, it's easier to know what you did wrong if you have live classes and mentors right then and there, the iteration process will become faster as well. So you might be wondering, after all of this, Amy, were your physics really improved? Did you actually have a better physics sense? Well, this is what happened freshman year at Caltech. One day we had a basketball game and to celebrate, my teammate's dad took her and me to get matcha at a mall. Mmm, delicious matcha, but then I remembered, ah, oh, I have to take my physics quiz. So for context at Caltech, all the tests and quizzes are essentially take home. So yeah, we were in good moods, high spirits. But then when we got back and I opened my physics quiz, I was so suddenly distraught and sad. Mood just plummeted all the way down. I was like, you know what? I was never good at physics. I tried my best. I'm just gonna probably take some L's. So I wrote down everything I thought I knew and I just brain dumped. Pro tip on math and science, write all of your thinking and work down because you can still get points for that. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try and whatever, hand it in, expecting out of 10, I would get two points. But lo and behold, I got the opposite of that. I actually got back an eight out of 10, which is really, really good for a physics quiz at Caltech. I literally had to look at that paper several times because I thought there was a mistake in the grading. And that just shows with starting from scratch, live help and lots of iteration that you can really actually improve and suddenly BS some things and get good grades. And that's why I ended up with an A at Caltech in physics. So folks, students, my friends, <laughs> that is the power of a growth mindset. And I hope that you guys really take that mindset with yourself as well. It's probably the thing that got me where I am today. And I'm continuing to use it every day on this journey of growth with you guys. Make sure to try DigiCafe with a link in my description. And again, these instructions to join their live classes. Don't miss the chance to get awesome live support from Mark and Matt. These three tips were great and all, but if you don't have the fundamentals, you might still struggle in things like math. So to get those fundamentals built up again and to make math easier, then check out this video. Thanks so much. Peace. <laughs> but after all of this, I have to burp so much today.